What a freaking crazy day. We have Skump, the king of Call of Duty, saying that anal beads might be the next thing for cheating in Call of Duty. If you're at TwitchCon, you can play Modern Warfare 2 early, and 343 just keeps lying to its community. All that and more in today's little take, so go ahead, sit back, get some popcorn, relax, and enjoy my take. What's up, everybody? It's your boy. It's Ellie. Welcome back to another take here at Esports with Elrod. Modern Warfare 2 is just around the corner. I believe we're two, maybe three weeks away from the early access of the campaign. But if you're at TwitchCon right now, all the way on the West Coast, Modern Warfare 2 supposedly is playable at the Intel booth. So if you're at TwitchCon and you're seeing this video, walk your happy ass over to the Intel booth and play a little Modern Warfare 2. If anything, do it for me because I do want to play Modern Warfare 2, man. I mean, this is just not fair. And if we're going to talk about not being fair, we could talk about not being fair in competition. And right now, cheating is just running rampant from the chess community. Kind of supposedly there's a chess player with anal beads up his anus that gives a little vibrations on when he moves the right pieces. I don't know. But we have Skump the King Call of Duty saying, yo, this might be viable for Call of Duty. Maybe, you know, maybe I should put some anal beads up there and just, just all over the place. I mean, I'm not, you know what? I won't speak for Skumpy. I'll let him speak for himself. Yo, what if Someone next year me. in Call of Duty I get anal beads and like if they're going the A, the second one vibrates if they're at B. That's what I'm saying. If they if I'll they like, go, <laughs> I'll be like, yo, wait. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll have, but how the hell I'll would be the guy that like, makes vibrate? it if they're planning like, it'll be three connected to the board. Yeah, right. Like, all three of them. I'd be, I'd be afraid. <laughs> I'm just sitting there with their own butt, their plans. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Damn. Next thing you notice, like someone's moaning. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> We could all agree that Scope was a little out of pocket for that, but that was just funny as hell. And I just honestly, I felt bad for Bo's there because he's trying to like figure out how it actually could work. And Scump's over there just trolling. And one of my favorite YouTubers, especially with Call of Duty News, Tactical Rab, he was, you know, made a video about this and expounded a little further on that cheating actually can happen in Call of Duty with, you know, looking over at the crowd and seeing lights and, and, and whatnot. I just want you guys to hear it for yourself and then I'll put my two cents at the end of it. But in search and destroy, like I'm sure this cheating has occurred in the past in other esports and stuff, maybe even in prior Call of Duty games, where you know a particular team has their coach or someone in the crowd. Like, of course, the classic way would just be that someone just holds up a sign that says A or B on it, and then you know tells the particular team trying to defend where the attackers are trying to go. Like, um, I mean, that's kind of Scum's example, right? It vibrates once for A, vibrates twice for B, or whatever, right? Like, um, I mean, look, you can't honestly like do they check for any of this? stuff we know that in the crowd nowadays if someone's chanting or doing something they shouldn't be they kick them out or trying to make noise for example when someone's trying to defuse the bomb but um i mean yeah is there anything really stopping like look the, the whole anal bead theory is unlikely that any team is going to be pulling anything like this out but um you know the point kind of stands that it's relatively easy if teams wanted to to try and make something happen honestly this kind of just takes me back to my time in paintball and yes people were cheating left and right in paintball that's kind of why i've left the whole scene because you would shoot somebody and they would wipe a hit off real quick and it was just becoming too blatant and overrun with however i don't think this is happening at these land events not just for call of duty but for halo counter-strike Valor, and all the fps genres i think a player playing the game looking over and then looking back trying to gain information that whole concept that amount of time is not plugged into the game and that could be a win or lose situation so i think most of the players are locked in and i don't see this happening However, incorporating anal beads, I mean, that's just going to take a whole new meaning to whatever it takes. And unfortunately, I don't want to have to do this, but I feel like just the, the Halo community needs to have a freaking win because right now they've just been receiving losses after losses. And unfortunately, I think it's because 343 keeps setting expectations that they just can't meet. We can see here that Steve Chill Game says, remember when 343 Industries announced drop pods for Halo Infinite? Dropping content, bug fixes as soon as they were ready while iterating the link that they were going to be aiming to get them out on a monthly basis. It's been six months since this video, which is crazy to think about that. Six months has already gone by and they've had two drop pods. So you also mentioned in your blog uh, the way that we would deliver these quality of life updates would be via drop pods. Um, wh what does that mean? Drop pods. We don't want to just wait and hold things back for season releases. If something's ready, we want to be able to put it in a pod and drop it. Our goal is to get into a monthly cadence of a drop pod a month. Think about a drop pod as a delivery vehicle with content, features, bug fixes, 
Lots of different things could go into a drop pod. We want to be able to do them every month. If something's ready, it goes that month. Um, we don't want to hold and wait until season boundaries. And when we say drop pods, just know that it's our way, ideally on a monthly basis, and we'll get up to speed to deliver content when it's ready. Yep. Um, content, features, bug fixes, um, mm -hmm. it's just a vehicle to deliver that stuff to you. Yes, at this point, Jerry Hook looks over at Joe, and how just in his head, because we know Joe... Uh, we know Jerry has left 343 Industries at this point. He's just looking at Joe like, yes, tell us what drop pods are going to be because I know that this is, is it going to happen. Like, this is so much like you look back at it and you, you see this face, you're like, oh my gosh, 343 is just, it's in a, it's in a spot. And I don't think it's Joseph Staten's hand. Like, I don't think it's Joseph's fault. And I think if anyone's putting the whole blame on, on Joe, I think that's, it's, you know, it's unfair. I think it's just a whole structure thing that 343 has to, to make Halo Infinite with both arms tied behind its back because they don't have a lot of developers. Microsoft isn't allocating, you know, a budget for them to get developers. Uh, you know, they did have a budget and they kind of squandered that budget. So uh, is that a fault of 343? Sure. But a lot of people that developed and made Halo Infinite are no longer at 343. So it literally is like a lifeboat that is sinking and they need a lifeboat to save this lifeboat. And honestly, the most baffling thing to me about the Halo Infinite community right now is I've seen people in the community be nitpicky about the type of content that they want to see come into Halo Infinite. So I had to make a quick short on this. If you guys don't know, I do TikToks and shorts basically every day, one to two a day. So go ahead and follow me on TikTok and Instagram. That's where you're going to find these shorts. I haven't made a Halo Infinite video in a while, and I just need to go on a rant here. You can see that we might be seeing some of these items come back for the Winter Bundle event that's coming, hopefully this winter. And I've been seeing a lot of comments saying, no, I don't like this because it's not realistic. Who gives a fuck if any of the content is realistic in Halo Infinite or not? You need content. At this point in time, I don't care if we get a giant flaming dick for the Mark 7 armor core. I just want content. Okay, and now I'm going to end out this video on at least my favorite game at the moment. My favorite game to play, which has been Shadowline. And today, October 7th, we're getting a new map called Terminal. Not Modern Warfare 2's Terminal, but a just new map called Terminal. You guys don't know shadow lines is an amazing first person shooter with pvp and pve elements pvp feels like old school cod cod 4 cod ghost and the pve element reminds me a lot of destiny but they did add a little sprinkle on top of this update giving us custom lobbies allowing us to do freaking tournaments and apparently this weekend we're going to see the first uh tournament with shadow line competition right here boom it's not ran by shadow line just by fans of shadow line people who are um fans of the game like me you can go ahead join their discord and get involved thank you for watching one of my daily dives into the gaming and esports scene if you want seven years of good luck and a picture of a cute dog make sure to like this video smash the subscribe button so hard that the little notification bell gets turned on and share this with a friend who loves gaming and esports as much as we do thank you for doing so here's a picture of my cute dog andy the labradoodle he goes literally everywhere with me if you want to play games with me follow me over on twitch twitch.tv forward slash esports with Elrod. I stream most days around 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So let's plan it out either on Discord or Twitter. Links down below. With that being said, that's where we're going to wrap up the video for today. Make somebody laugh today. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.